Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to our KDD 2020 tutorial on recent advances in graph analytics and its applications in healthcare. This tutorial will be given by five of us. Professor Fei Wang is from Canal University. Professor Peng Cui is from Tsinghua University. This is Jen Pei from Simon Fraser University. Professor Yang Chiu Song will, is from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And Dr. Cheng Xi Zhang is also from Canal University. In this tutorial, we'll cover five different sections. I'm talking about the introduction section, and the rest four sections will be taught by our um, other uh, presenters. Well, <clears throat> let's start from the application. Long time ago, for medical applications, our dream is that we can have one magic medicine. It is one size fits all design. Hopefully for one disease, we use one medicine and can cure the, uh, the patients. However, this is unrealistic and also impractical. In order to achieve prescription medicine, we need to be diverse. We need to give different patients different medicines. This is a strong transition from the one-size-fits-all to prescription medicine. It needs multiple-level patient uh, stratification. In order to implement this you know, stratified medicine and uh, prescription medicine, we need to understand the patients, we need to understand the medicine, we need to understand the process of fighting against diseases. Therefore, we need a lot of data. The prescription medicine tries to ensure the delivery of the right intervention to the right patient at the right time. In an article a few years ago named a new initiative on precision medicine, the author said the initiative will encourage and support the next generation of scientists to develop creative new approaches for detecting, measuring, and analyzing a wide range of biomedical information. This would include molecule, genomic, cellular, clinical behavior, physiological, and environmental parameters. As you can see, in order to achieve the um, precision medicine, we need a lot of data. We need a lot of data from many different sources and for uh, many different purposes. Prescription medicine is well beyond the infection point. Indeed, we need a lot of uh, different data to connect together to get a better understanding about the cause of the uh, problems, or the cause of the disease, and the spreading of the disease and the uh, patients. And that's another um, article um, uh, on this subject. Let's look at different kinds of data that may likely be useful for prescription medicine. First, you may think about the electronic health records, EHR. Electronic health record is an evolving concept uh, defined as a systematic collection of electronic health information about individual patients or populations. It is so important for our medical purpose 
But at the same time, electronic health records are highly distributed in different locations. For example, different hospitals, different uh, practitioners. And it is so hard to connect them together. Even for one patient, it is a great challenge to collect all the related uh, technical records, I mean, healthcare records, and put them in the electronic way. We see a lot of AI research, data mining research on medical imaging. Indeed, there are different kinds of medical images. For example, we may have X-ray computed um, tomographic. We may have position emission uh, tomographic. We may have uh, magnetic uh, resonance uh, imaging. And different medical images may need a different processing. And they are also um, need to be connected to each other. Therefore, even we mentioned the simple term of medical imaging, we still need to collect them, connect them, um, and then um, working on them to make them uh, to make sense from the medical images. Drugs. Drugs are important for medical. Drugs are typical chemical pro, uh, compounds. However, there are many different designs of drugs, and we need to understand how drugs take effect for patients. And this needs a lot of data. To understand deeper into uh, uh, patients and the uh, medicines and also uh, the uh, diseases, we may need to look at gene data. This may include the DNA data, the uh, gene data, the gene, gene inspection, um, for example. If we want to put drugs, medicine um, in action, and we look at the whole process, then we come to the physiology data. Physiology is the scientific study of function in living systems. It is a subdiscipline of biology. Physiology focuses on how organisms, organ systems, organs, cells, and biomolecules carry out the chemical or physical functions that exist in a living system. In other words, physiology is about the science of dynamic system. And of course, in order to understand such a dynamic system, we need a lot of data. And we need to analyze a lot of data. Medicine or medical process in large is a complication process. Therefore, the patient's interaction is critical. We conduct all kinds of different patient surveys in the medical process. Therefore, understanding the medical, uh, the patient survey data and making good sense of such survey data is important. So patient survey is another important kind of data that is needed in the healthcare um, process. Social media. Social media is so important, and we all know uh, that in our current pandemic. Social media can carry information and misinformation, and it connects uh, patients, health people, um, care providers, and many different parties. There are general social medias like uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. There are also some specific social media connecting patients and their um, care providers, for example. Social media produces a lot of data that are useful for healthcare. Environment. Many diseases are related to environment. Therefore, collecting environmental data is important. So collecting environmental data is far from trivial. And also, we need to collect uh, different data sources and make good sense of such data. 
Medical researchers have produced a large amount of biomedical literature. Therefore, it is important for us to search and extract useful information and knowledge from my, uh, biomedical literature. So biomedical literature is another important kind of data sources that we need to rely on in healthcare. We have so many different data sources. How can we put them together and make good use? A natural way to put them together is to form a network or a graph. Graph is almost the last resort we can use when we are facing complicated data sources and complicated uh, information. Because graph also represents the divide and conquer methodology in our scientific research. Why is a divide and conquer? Because in a graph, we have nodes and edges. With a local region like an uh, edge or a node, then you can see that it is more or less structured. However, graph can also allow us to model globally unstructured um, information. Therefore, graph is a very natural and useful structure for healthcare data. As you can see, we have a large graph. For example, even in this um, you know, um, uh, pandemic uh, period, we can use the uh, graph to organize the related information to understand the uh, development of um, drugs quickly. This is the uh, WHO um, figure about the um, you know, pandemic situation. Here you can see we can uh, connect the um, confirmed cases and uh, the uh, you know uh, regions and also the uh, countries. And also, graph data can help us to find uh, drug repurposing. And in this uh, in a recent study um, in cell discovery, um, they used the network based. Uh, data uh, to help the drug repurposing for the novel uh, coronavirus 19. So you can see um, graph and network data can help us to integrate um, information from different sources and then can help us to uh, go through a complicated, a sophisticated process of drug development. Moreover, Using graph data, we can form a knowledge graph. And using the knowledge graph, we can conduct a very useful and helpful services to patients and medical workers. For example, question answering and decision support. Patients and medical workers and can ask questions and the uh, search engine can automatically discover the answer from uh, knowledge graphs. And also, knowledge graph can provide useful uh, information to uh, support the decisions made by medical workers. There are more applications in healthcare using network data. For example, uh, in the in uh, silico drug molecule design, and it helps us to understand uh, the uh, pros and cons of different drug designs and how to filter out uh, those unpromising designs. So in this introduction, I hope I can motivate you to <coughs> uh, the you know uh, very broad and meaningful application of network in connecting different sources uh, serving the healthcare applications. In the rest of this tutorial, we will explain how those data sources can be integrated using network and how the network can be analyzed and mined to derive 
useful knowledge for medical domain. Thank you.